Hello, Internet, and welcome to my review for Angels of Death, episode 12, which is the last TV episode. The show is taking a week off, I think, and then it's coming back next Friday with uh, four uh, online episodes. I think it was going to be the same thing, but online because they lost their time slot. Kind of like what um, Bakemono Gatari did back in the day, way back in 2009, how episode 12 was like a cutoff, but then there were still the three episodes that were online only. So it's unlike Bakemono Gatari, where I think that came out over the course of like months and shit. Um, this is going to be either all at once or over four weeks. I'm not sure which. Um, so don't quote me on anything. But yeah, when we last left off, um, Rachel broke free of Gray's hallucinatory gas. Uh, so Gray surrendered and agreed to give Rachel the medicine she needed to stitch up Zach, which she did. And so they headed up to the first basement. Uh, Rachel got oddly scared of Zach proceeding any further when she had a look around the initial room. Uh, and that's where we leave off. So, before we begin the episode proper, I'd like to remind everyone I have my um, seasonal anime review, Fall 2018 Straw Poll, where you can vote on what series you want me to review um, for next season. Much like how Angel of Death got on the channel, it was not a series I was looking into at all when it first came out. Uh, back in July, but then it got support on the straw poll, and so I voted for it. So, you, uh, so I reviewed it, I mean. So if you want to see more series like this in the future, go down in the description and vote. Yeah, so, moving on to the episode proper. Um, when we pick up a bit, a bit before where we left off last week. Uh, with Zach investigating the room, like we saw, and he, and he opens the door, which is where we left last week. And he goes into the new room, let me move my camera up a little bit. And he goes into the new room, and... Um, he sees these two people stitched together. And they're mostly in silhouettes, except for the red stitch marks, as I recall. Which is a nice way to signal, for those of you who, who have not figured it out yet, this was Rachel who did this. Because as, as we've seen way back since episode one, Rachel knows her way around a stitching needle. Um, and, you know, to put it lightly... And so when we see these stitch marks on these corpses, it's really clear that whatever happened here, this is what Rachel did. Uh, this, is, this is probably Rachel's house, if not, it's a copy of Rachel's house, whatever. But, you know, we, it's, it's pretty clear what, um, that Rachel was the one who was responsible for all this. Uh, and so, as Zach, Zach has not put this together, because he is... Not a an anime viewer who understands that things are only put in to mean something most of the time. Um, and so he doesn't know what's going on. And before he can figure it out, Rachel gets super agitated and, like, begs Zach to just hurry up and kill her now. And, like, right then and there, screw the whole escaping thing, just murder me. Which is super selfish, by the way, which is... Actually kind of weird, because they made a whole thing in the last arc that Rachel isn't actually selfish. That's just Grey wanting her to think that she's selfish when she's really not. Except here, she's more than willing to abandon Zack to this floor uh, rather than, you know, have Zack learn what she did. Which is kind of, I don't know, just feels slightly out of character, I guess? Um, yeah, I don't know, it seems kind of weird. It seems that it's just, but it seems like it's not that she wants to die right then and there. She absolutely wants to die. That's her whole character arc. She wanted to die. Um, but like, it seems that it's not that she wants to abandon Zack to the floor. She just really does not want Zack to learn the truth about her. Which is interesting, given that what we learn about her, I'm assuming there's more. I'll get to, I'll get to that later. Put that off for later. Don't worry. Uh, but so, Zack goes to investigate the house some more. Uh, when suddenly he like goes down a hallway and Danny pops up from behind him to run back into the room and he reveals that he knows everything. What, what the building is, where the exit is, what Rachel's past is, everything. Which makes me wonder, who even, who even is Danny? Like, who is this person? He was one of the lowest of the floor masters and he just fucking knows everything? Does everyone besides Zack know, know everything? Because, like, when Grey shows up later, you know, he implies that Zack was slightly different from the other four masters. And because he had known nothing but killing, he was, like, somehow pure or something. So maybe that lays into why Zack doesn't know everything about the building and 
Rach and Eddie, um, Kathy, and Danny all do know everything about the building. Uh, and Gray, of course. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Don't know where to go with that. Um, and so Danny locks the door. Zach tries, tries to slice the door open when he discovers the door is made of metal. And so Danny tells him, go investigate the floor and then I'll let you in. Knowing that he'll learn whatever horrid thing is in Rachel's past. Um, and that'll make him reject Rachel? I don't know. It's still really vague what that's supposed to do. Uh, and he goes through a list of pretty basic puzzles, I guess, you know, or basic traps. Like, the door, the ceiling, like, collapses on him at one point, and he gets out of the way, and then some darts pop up, and he, like, slices the darts with his scythe, which is really weird. And then he sees, you know, the key in the bathtub, and he goes to pick it out, and gets attacked by piranhas. And I get it would be, I feel like, would, I feel like that would just be a lot more engaging while playing Angels of Death, the game. But, like, watching the show, it's just kind of fodder, I guess. It's just kind of filling time. I didn't really think it really added all that much to the plot. Um, so, yeah. There was one thing that did work, though. And that was after the key and the piranha trick. Uh, he walked onto some, like, hollow wood. And he collapses, and the, it collapses under him, revealing a bunch of spikes. And he barely catches on with his, like, his scythe, holding it, like, horizontally. And you see, you know, the wood starting to crack under the scythe head. And that worked real well. That was a really nice, like, really up the tension. I was like, oh, shit. I know he's not going to die, because, like, there are still four episodes left. Though at that point, I wasn't entirely sure, because, like, I had heard that 12 was all of a sudden a surprise ending or something on MAL. So it ended at 12. Um, but the scythe starts to give way, and someone walks up to it, and it's really tense. And then we find out that it's Gray, who has come back up to help Zach, I think. I think is what he's here for. Um, so, yeah, he helps Gray. Or helps Zach. Zach's falling to his death, and Gray, like, picks him up, you know. Um, and Gray finally reveals what this place is. And he, we get into a bit of his backstory. And it's that... When Gray, Gray used to be a perfectly average priest. Um, until he saw people using the name of God to justify their own inhumanity. Which is a perfectly valid response to a lot of things in the world today. And honestly, depending on where that little plot point goes, maybe there's some kind of larger critique at work. I don't know. Right now it just seems kind of surface dressing for, you know, murder antics. Um, but Gray got so fed up with that, and he started wondering how God sees that. And so he thought he would take, stand in the place of God himself, right? Is that it? Um, and then he created this place, this is where it gets confusing. He, he became, he saw himself as God, and for some reason that meant he had to create a murder building. And have, you know, the angels, Zach, um, Danny, Eddie, and Kathy, uh, uh, like, on each floor, the people on B7 were somehow sacrifices to something, and then the floor masters would kill them. I'm really confused what exactly is going on there. If someone, if I'm not supposed to understand, don't tell me, but if I was supposed to get more than I actually got, please fill me in in the comments. You know, y'all, game players have been really great during this whole run, Filling me in on things I missed in the episode, so please continue to do that. I greatly appreciate it. Um, and I'm kind of confused. So it's kind of left vague. I guess it is target where these people who were using the name of God for things. But I'm not entirely sure if it was just religious people in general, or just people who were using the name of God for things that Gray considered evil. Because, like, if so, I get why Rachel being considered religious. You know, Re Rachel's whole reason for not just killing herself is because God says no. She's a very Christian person, very Catholic. Um, and so I, if it's just to kill religious people broadly, I get why Rachel will be brought here. Though, admittedly, what we find out, what we get confirmed about her status as a resident of the first basement kind of throws everything into consideration, into doubt. I mean, uh, but, like, if it's just for those who use the name of God for evil... Is it like, did she justify the parent murder? 
by, um, by In the Name of God somehow. I don't know. There's a whole lot we don't get. There's a whole lot still left open. And I hope, I hope what we get at the end of the episode was not the full story. That Rachel had killed her parents and stitched them together. Because that's just kind of weird. Like, it's... It's... Compared, compared to everything the other Floor Masters have done, a simple murder is kind of trivial. And given that there's some kind of pause before we see Zack's wide reaction, I imagine we just didn't hear what he's actually reacting to. I'm skipping ahead to the end, because that's really what I want to talk about in this video. Um, you know, because... I don't see Zach... Like, Zach murdered his own parents. So why would that be a big thing? Why would... Why would Rachel... Like, would, would does she think that... Like, he wouldn't believe that patricide and matricide are some inherently awful thing because he committed it. He did that. And that wouldn't be enough for... For him to hate her. So I don't quite understand... What's going on here. Um... So I imagine there's some greater thing that we'll see in the intro to the next episode. Two weeks from now, two weeks to wait, Once th both this and Boruto. I thought by by waiting, you know, sure it would suck that I've already waited so long, but at least I've already waited most of the time I'll have to wait. But no, they're both taking a week off, and, and Boruto's place case a week and a half, that's besides the point. Uh, so yeah, we have a long time for that. Uh, so... That's really most what I wanted to bring up, both what the gray was, what the whole building is here for, still kind of vague to me, and the fact that there has to be something bigger to Rachel's story, just because it seems so comparatively trivial to everything else. But there's one more thing I want to bring up. In when Ra when Zach goes into the room that has the Rachel Gardner plates that he uses to open up what's actually Rachel's room, we get shots of the room like some you know your general scene setting introductory shots filmmaking 101 but what we see one of the things we see in this room is a can of like a bucket of eyeballs That's such a Danny thing to have around. This is supposed to be Rachel's place, not Danny's. It's supposed to be Rachel's house. Like, is Danny manipulating things in some way? You know? The eyeballs are a clue? I don't know. I got no fucking clue. Uh, but yeah, all in all, this episode was fine. Uh, it worked well enough. You know, it did what it needed to do. It got us right on the cusp of uncovering, hopefully not fully uncovered, but right on the cusp of uncovering everything about Rachel. Uh, I feel like Gray's explanation of the building itself is still kind of vague. I'm not sure if that's intentional, or if I'm just dense, or what exactly is going on. Um, but yeah, I also feel like the final scene definitely should have made it clearer that Zack was not relating to just the parent killing, just because that seemed kind of light for Zack. Which is awful to say. Murdering your parents is not a light thing whatsoever. But compared to everything else in this series, it kind of is. Uh, but yeah, that's really all I have for this week's episode of Angels of Death. Hope you all enjoyed the episode and this video. If you did, feel free to drop me a like, subscribe, or uh, fill out that straw poll in the description for more obscure anime titles you want to see me cover next season. Um, or you know what? Do whatever the fuck you want. I don't really care. I'm not the boss of you. So, as always, people, keep kicking ass, and I'll see you in the future. Bye! Oh, I did that way too late. Keep kicking ass, and I'll see you in the future. Bye! Much better.